So now that you've up, updated your firmware on your Neptune, uh, your Elegoo Neptune 4, and you want to start printing, you don't know what to do. I personally use Cura, the um, slicer software, and I'm going to show you that, and I'm going to show you the profile I selected and uh, how to kind of get up and running. I don't use Elegoo's Cura that, that's provided. I just don't use it. So um, I can't help you as far as Elegoo's version goes. I just download the regular Cura because I can use that with all my printers. Um, but let's get started. So you've already, let's say you've already downloaded Cura 5.5 um, and you want to you get started. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to select, you're going to add a printer. So you go up in here to add printer and uh, it'll take a sec. You go non-printer. You're going to add, I don't do the IP address thing, I just add a non-network printing, is what I do. I don't have the whole network thing figured out, and it really hasn't affected me at all. Um, Elegoo, where is it? Uh, a, B, C, D, E. <laughs> I, yeah, I just like to be silly. Anyway, um, I selected, because I have a 4 max, I selected the 3 max profile. So this is what I did. I went to Elegoo, I grabbed the 3 Max, and I went to Add. So that's the biggest thing. That you're gonna add this profile in. If you have the 3 Plus, add the 3 Plus. If you have the 3 Pro, or the 4, if you have the 4 of any of those, just add the 3's version. And then once you do that, um, it'll give you the standard nozzle size, which is a 0.4. Uh, they have not come out with anything bigger or larger, so I would say just stick with the 0.4. So this is now your Neptune 3 Max. You're going to want to go in here and manage printers. And when this loads, so you're gonna to go to your 3 Max and your machine settings. Now the 3 Max will pop up automatically with basically different heights and dimensions. And if you wanna see the difference this is my 4MAX settings. Come on. Oh, okay, it doesn't want to give me, doesn't want to open them right now for some reason. Anyway, so basically you want to go and you want to change these to your 4MAX settings. The 4MAX height is different. Uh, I believe the 4MAX depth is 420. Um, other than that, I haven't changed anything else on here. I've left all of the rest of this alone. Um, and then what I did is I went over here and in the three max settings, it comes up with fast, you know, different options here, basically. I have some custom ones that I've made, but the basic ones are over here. Um, fast works, you know, it'll start with fast. So let's go through that one first. The biggest thing I changed right away was um, you want to get rid of combing. You don't want combing setting on your on your printer. It drags a nozzle across your print and it, it just, it's horrible. So you find combing, you'll change that. Um, since I'm right here, I'm gonna show you the print speed. I changed my print speed on this. So you can see the three max print speed generically for fast was 60 millimeters per second. Um, I'm printing at 250 millimeters per second. And as soon as I change that, it changes all of these and it calculates it all. Um, so you can go through here. Uh, my Z hop speed, I think I upped it maybe to 15. So there's some, some of those, um, acceleration. I changed my acceleration to 2000. Um, I think you can do more, but I would definitely play around with different filaments you're using. So that's the big thing right there. Um, changing it to the acceleration and changing this print speed. Um, the travel speed on mine, I made 500 because I can, um, I think I left the initial layer speed. That definitely affects how it lays the, the first layer. Uh, so I left that. You want that slow. Um, you can enable jerk control if you feel comfortable adjusting your jerk control. Um, I haven't quite played around with that just yet, but that's something you can do if you'd like. This is combing mode. It's underneath the travel settings, if you can see it. I don't even know if you guys can see that. I'm doing all this and you probably can't even see it. Um, so under the travel settings, there is a option for combing, combing mode, and then I'll say I'm not over surface. I just turn it off altogether. Um, you
you can do Z hop when retracted. I do Z hop when retracted and I usually make it the layer height at minimum, but oftentimes I'll double it and I'll make it so my, my layer height's 0 0.2, then I'll make it 0.4, or yeah, actually just 75, 0.4, um, and then I'll I'll usually do that, or and I sometimes I just do the the over prints too, just so it'll just move over the top of the print instead of through the print. Um, most of these other things I, I don't change. Um, generate supports, you know, these are all based on things you want to do for. Um, I I have tree supports. I love tree supports. Um, I don't do everywhere. I do touching the build plate, um, the branch angle, overhang angle. I think I changed it out to 65, if I remember correctly. Nope, it's not 95, 65. So those are the ones I started with. Um, you can adjust these based on your filament and your supports and that sort of thing. So that's something you'll probably want to do based on the, the filament you use. Um, brim width, that all depends on the filament you use. Um, I wanted to address something though, um, if I can show you guys. So, a lot of people ask me how to do um, temp towers and calibration towers, which that's basically over here under ex extensions. To get to extensions, to, to do auto towers and calibration towers, you're going to go into Marketplace. So the Marketplace is up here in the corner, and in Marketplace is where you'll search, you use a search to search for um, towers. And you can download them as well from you know, thingy verse and that sort of thing, but I just go in here and I just type in something like, you know, um, let's see, calibration. So, calibration shapes, calibration towers. Uh, you can see I've got shapes and towers, you know, installed, so I can uninstall them. Once these install, um, it will restart this, or you'll want to restart this for them to show up over here under extensions. So you'll restart your, your Cura, you'll go in your extensions, you'll select one of these towers, and when you do something like retract, I personally will start with speed and temperature, oftentimes temperature and speed, you'll do a couple times just to get the right temperature dialed in, the right speed dialed in, because sometimes the temperature will change based on the speed you want to print. So if you want to sprint faster, you might need a little hotter, you know, vice versa. You will want to do this to, to meet your personal filament that you have and your printer. Um, I've had multiple printers that are the exact same printer and they do not have the exact same settings because they don't print the same. Even if it's the exact same filament, the printers are different no matter what you do. Even if it's the exact same, you know, Neptune 4 printer and you have five of them in a row you you may not have the exact same settings on all of them So that being said you can do a lot of things um, you can flow um, Parts for calibration. These are really handy as well. Uh, I think this one had one that I tried for Let's see. Where is it? Bridges. Uh, I did a bridge test My Formax can print these really fast No supports needed um, It printed amazing. I might even have it here No, I don't have it um, but I can show you some of the calibrations. Speed, this is one of the speed ones. So it helps me dial in the, the correct speed because I'll start seeing defects in the speed if it's too fast. Um, same with retract settings, you can change, you know, you can print these to have, see what, you know, what kind of retract settings you want to have. Um, those are the big things I would say do. Yeah, you, you can save your own, you know, this was the filament I used that I just can't get it to print properly on my on my Elegoos. Um, I've made several custom settings basically. I have one that's my normal tests. Is what I called it normal tests. So you can see that I have generate supports and you know all these different things. The overhang angle is different. The Z hop is different. Print speeds are slightly different. So you know you can make them, save them. I say play around with them, save them, and. Uh, you know, I make different ones, and if I don't like how it turns out, I delete it, and I go back to the original. But um, that's what I recommend doing. I've had great luck doing it this way. And then once you feel comfortable, start printing something bigger.